guys, welcome back to Playtech TV. Before we get started today, I think just I want to remind you that we've got a couple days left on the giveaway for the Intel PC. So like the Facebook page, enter the competition, all that sort of stuff, and get yourself in the draw ASAP because uh, you don't want to miss out on this one. It's going to be massive, okay? Anyway, today we're going to be talking about the Broadwell E processors from Intel. So um, there's been a little bit of mystery surrounding these guys. So I want to kind of like talk about these new high-end i7s and kind of what they can offer to a, a, a normal user. So not like, you know, obviously they're going to be great for people doing crazy number crunching, video rendering, and everything like that. But if you're just, you know, like if you're a normal gamer or something like that, and you kind of have a bit of money to burn, um, then maybe these guys are going to be a cool addition to your setup. So first of all, the most obvious advantage here is that some of these new CPUs, they go up to 10 physical cores and 20 logical cores. So what does that mean? What physical cores, logical cores? I'm just going to go into a little bit of detail about that. So with physical cores, they're a physical core that is sitting on the CPU. It's something that's actually there. Whereas a logical core is kind of like a virtual core. So each physical core, we can use two logical cores on board that with a technology called hyperthreading. The reason why they do this is because of how CPUs handle information. So on a single core with no extra logical cores, on a single physical core, like say on an i3 or an i5 or something like that, when the CPU actually fires off a task, it's actually got to wait till that task completes before it can fire the second one. So sometimes that means firing off a task, waiting for the hard drive to return information, and then starting the second one. So while they're waiting for that hard drive to actually reply or whatever, it's going to have a lot of downtime. So CPU is going to be just sitting there waiting. So adding a second logical core actually means that during this downtime, the CPU can actually start a second task. So this gives us a huge increase in bandwidth when we're processing our data in this manner. It's not quite like 100% increase because we've still only got the one physical core. It's not like adding magically another 100% uh, uh, performance improvement. It's usually closer to about 30%. And what it's doing, it's just milking that extra downtime and turning that into actual usable uptime for the CPU. Now having all this bandwidth is cool and everything, but what do we do with um, applications that don't actually make use of all these extra cores and we, and we need a little bit more performance? Well, that's when the turbo boost comes in. So a typical turbo boost will basically under high demand, we'll crank a little bit more voltage and things into your CPU and turn up the performance, turn up the clock speed a little bit. But on the new Broadwell E chips, we've actually got Turbo Boost Max 3.0, which is a new kind of uh, boosting that Intel have developed. So what this actually does is it figures out which of your cores has the highest overclocking potential. So if you've got 10 cores, it'll basically look at every single one of them and it'll go, this one here has just got the, the, the right uh, sort of tolerances to be able to crank just, just that little bit higher than all the others. And then it will actually push that particular core to this maximum level that it can handle, which is actually oftentimes much higher than the normal turbo boost frequency that the other cores are working at. So it can actually take that one core, crank it all the way up, and then push any high demand uh, applications or processes that will really benefit from these uh, higher clock speeds onto that uh, core. So that's a great way of just getting that extra bit of performance out of there. And I mean, a lot of people talk about the silicon lottery when they're buying a chip, they never know how good this one's gonna overclock or anything like that. Having a 10 core processor gives you a really good chance. At least one of those cores is gonna be able to be cranked up absolutely crazy. And Turbo Boost Max 3.0 is really gonna help uh, make use of that. So a lot of people are probably saying, um, yeah, this is cool, Greg. Um, that's a great story, but what do we actually do with all this kind of stuff? So I'm going to sort of tell you about a couple of my favorite ways to use this in a kind of like a gaming context. So the number one way, which I really like, is that um, if we load up our um, task manager and we actually go to the processes, we can do what we call set core affinity. So what we can actually do there is we can choose an application and then we can assign it to particular cores. So we can actually say, hey, look, I got 20 logical cores here. I'm going to assign my game, the game that I'm playing right now, to eight of those logical cores. And that kind of gives us like standard i7 performance. We've got four physical cores blocked out, and that's going to play our game on it. And then I might say, hey, look, I still got 12 more cores. I still got 12 more logical cores. So I'm going to take my gameplay recording software, like, um, you know, Fraps or whatever, or something like that, and I'm going to give that maybe 
another four cores, so another eight logical cores. So I've got my game playing over here. I've got the gameplay recording software running here. They're each running completely separate, so they're not going to kind of like interfere with each other. They're not going to be fighting each other for resources. And they're going to be sitting completely by themselves, working away happily, each with the power of like an i a dedicated mainstream i7. So four cores, four physical cores, eight logical cores each. And then I've still got I've still got two physical cores left. So that leaves me with four logical cores hiding in the background there. And you know what I'm gonna do with that? I'm gonna assign that to whatever I'm streaming it from. So I'm gonna be playing, I'm gonna be recording, and I'm gonna be streaming all on one CPU. And they're all gonna be sitting in their own box. So if one of the programs sort of starts to um, gobble up resources and things like that, that they'll keep to themselves and it won't interfere with the others. So that's gonna be really, really cool for like keeping your stream or keeping your whatever you're recording nice and, um, and stable and you're not gonna be like sort of interfering with each other. And another cool way, which is kind of related to gaming, which I know a lot of the Minecraft type guys really like, is that you can actually split the CPU down the middle more or less. And you can say, hey look, I'm gonna take five of these physical cores, which again makes 10 logical cores, and I'm gonna assign those to Minecraft. And then on the other five physical cores, so once again, another 10 logical cores, I'm gonna say, this is what I'm gonna be running my dedicated server on. So you're gonna be hosting your own dedicated server on your machine, and it's gonna be sitting there by itself Using, using its own sort of pool of resources, its own sort of um, CPU and everything like that. And then you're gonna be actually playing it on the other hand, keeping them completely separate and um, just in their own box and they're not gonna be interfering with each other. So there are dozens of ways we can make use of all this extra power on these CPUs for gaming related stuff. Everybody knows that it's great for rendering video and, and, and crunching numbers and big data sets and things like that. That's, that, that's no news, everybody knows that. But um, maybe it's giving you some ideas of stuff that you could do um, in a gaming context. And it's especially relevant because we're giving away one of these systems. So I, I really want you guys to like maybe comment, tell me what kind of stuff you could do with it uh, maybe what kind of stuff you're, you're gonna do with it if you think you're gonna win and um, yeah you've probably got plenty of ideas that I haven't even ever thought of so um, let me know in the comments thanks guys it's just been a quick overview of why the Broadwell e processors are so cool and um, I'll see you next time you know what I'm just gonna keep starting again over and over again, forever. I got, I got, I got a thing planned out. I just.